right now with Rob Atchison, who is London homegrown, uh, three-time IHRA Funny Car Champion. Rob, I have been welcoming everybody all day long to uh, to Canada, but I don't think I have to do that with you. No, this is my home track. This is uh, the one that I made my first uh, pass in. That you know, This is uh, where all my friends and family come to watch, and uh, it's great to be back home, actually. Well, how long have you been involved in, uh, in, in, in racing? I've been drag racing now for 14 years, so I'm a veteran, but I'm still fairly young, which is nice to keep, uh, you know, still be a little wet between, uh, behind the ears, but uh, to have a little bit of seat experience, and uh, I've been fortunate enough you know, to be able to win a few championships. Well, you've been very successful, and I mean, it's one of those sports, I'm sure, that uh, experience has a lot to do with, with who wins, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, it took me a, a long time, really, to get the combination figured out and to understand um, you know what the race tracks are asking for as far as clutch is concerned and how to make the horsepower with the engines and the fuel system and stuff I mean it's been a learning experience and it still is I mean I'm still learning a lot of stuff and uh, with technology it really never ends I mean uh, new parts come out and new uh, ignition systems are designed and then you can burn more fuel and you got to be able to put that power to the ground and it's a constant uh, um, challenge every weekend out well, it's great, and uh, you also, I see that you have your family along with you, and it's always nice, I'm sure, to be able to uh, to have them close by, and, and like you said, even having friends and uh, family and people you kind of grew up with uh, in the stands would probably be uh, kind of a kick for you as well. Yeah, I was able to build up a great uh, fan following, you know, because I started here at this track, you know, 14 years ago, and then they've kind of watched me you know, blossom into a world champion, and, and constantly going quicker, trying to make the car better, and... Um, so I've got, you know, I've built a huge fan base, and then, like you said, being 45 minutes from home, it's nice to be able to have all my family and friends come down and watch. And we don't get that very often, and uh, it's really special. Well, it's really interesting, and it's great to have a champion from uh, from home right here in our backyard. And uh, what you race is a funny car. It's uh, for the uninitiated like me. What makes this a funny car? Uh, the funny cars were uh, their experimental class in 1960, mid 60s to late 60s, and um, what the, manu the car manufacturers did—they designed these one-piece body replicas of what their cars were going to look like, like the Camaros, the Mustangs, and so on. Uh, Dodge used a lot of like the Challengers and the uh, Barracudas. They designed these one-piece bodies as molds for uh, experimental use to see if they were going to be popular, if they're going to sell, and um, they used them, put them on uh, chassis similar to these, uh, a little bit different, obviously, than back then but uh, and they, they took them to the drag strips I mean, drag racing was huge in the 60s and that was a place to get a feel for what the people wanted and when they first saw these cars having you know no doors and uh, being propped up you know on a pole similar to this like we're standing underneath it right now like and uh, kind of stuck as being a funny car I mean that's really how the uh, people called them floppers sometimes or um, you know uh, plastic fantastics a lot of the bodies they, they made you know different names but uh, the funny car stuck as the as the name to use and and back then it really was a funny looking car so and that's been it forever so now what uh, what separates the funny car in your particular class from some of the other uh other divisions. We run uh, methanol, which uh, uh, separates us from like the nitro funny cars, and we're the alcohol funny cars, we're the alcohol side of it. And uh, you know, our superchargers are different than the nitro cars. Uh, we run a screw type supercharger, and they run uh, GMC or a root style, uh, 60 degree rotor. So uh, the superchargers are different, the uh, fuel's different, but uh, after that, they're pretty much identical. They use the similar bodies, they use similar chassis. Uh, they, our, our weight is virtually the same. We're just, um, you know, we make about 3,000 horsepower. They make you know five and a half six thousand horsepower so that's that those are the two differences you mean that one category you know to double the horsepower seems a lot or an extreme but it, it that is the next step up I guess in these two classes okay well I mean the point is as you just said earlier you still have to make that speed hit the hit the pavement as well right so I mean in that uh, what are the differences in speed between those two classifications or, or are there any sure yeah like uh, our top speed in uh, alcohol funny car class is like uh, 258 265 right around there is a really good speed and uh, the nitro cars will run uh, anywhere from 310 to 318 320 miles an hour but what happens is your rolling resistance becomes way less so you have to multiply your horsepower to be able to to go that much quicker so you know 250 miles an hour is 3,000 horsepower 320 is 6,000 horsepower so you, it is drastic but uh, you know the, the you reap the benefits I guess if you can double the horsepower so you're really saying what it is is that you're much more fuel efficient than your uh, than your friends in the other funny cars right yeah at some point I guess we are I mean we'll burn 
uh, five and a half, maybe six gallons a pass, and they'll burn, I think, close to 15 or 20 gallons a pass. So, And their fuel's a lot more expensive, and uh, all their parts are more expensive. I mean, it is definitely a step up. I figure that for one year in this class, you would spend... Uh, a budget of 180, maybe 200 thousand dollars, and in the top uh, top fuel funny car would be uh, one and a half to two and a half million. So uh, you know, for for that extra 70 mile an hour, how, how you know it's, it is definitely cost effective for us. So we also talked to somebody earlier. I'm just wondering because you were just talking about the. Uh your fuel, and they were talking about differences at sea levels and and at different uh, altitudes. Does that also affect uh, the way that you run? Yeah, it affects every car, um, every human being. We're we're all affected by the altitude. I mean, we don't notice it as much, let's say, but the engines do it. You have to be able to burn the fuel, and the, and um, you have to mix uh, oxygen to do that and to create the spark and to burn it. So. When the altitude changes, your oxygen density levels change and uh, the amount of oxygen in the air changes. So really the weather is so crucial to our success and, and how the cars run. I mean, if it's really humid and it's really hot, then the engine's gonna be sluggish just like we are. And then if you're sea level and it's crisp and you know the barometer's really high pressure, like a 30.1, um, barometric pressure. I mean, then it's going to run really fast. It's going to, you know, it's going to feel great. And uh, and if you're an athlete in a sprinting, uh, any kind of Olympics or whatever, you know, when you're at sea level, they, they run faster, they swim quicker, they do everything better. So uh, the engines are no different. They they got to breathe just like we do. And um, and the only fortunate thing is with the engines, we can make changes. We can change the ignition timing. We can change the compression ratio. We can make it think it's got that kind of power when the air changes. So we got to be able to know how to read it and then how to adjust for it. Well, it's really interesting, and it's great to have a champion from uh, from home right here in our backyard, and uh, definitely uh, an exciting time for me because I'm learning something completely different here. Thanks again, and I appreciate it. Thank you.